A lot of you guys have questions about raising geese, so I'm pleased to share with you my secret to raising cobra chickens. Release the geese! How are you doing this morning, my lovelies, huh? How is everybody? So I've been raising geese here on our farm for about two years now. And by far, I've got to say that they are my favorite animal here on the farm. While the chickens are really great and I love the personality and pluck of the ducks, they are more profitable than any of the other birds that we have on our farm. They're ecologically more sustainable than any other birds that we have on our farm. And personally, I just like working with them more than any other animal we have on the farm. It would make me so happy if a bunch of people saw this video and got so inspired by seeing our geese here on our farm and they in turn went out to raise their own geese. Because I really believe that the world needs more geese. We raise geese here on our farm for meat and breeding stock. As far as farm birds go, they're not nearly as a reliable egg producer as say ducks or chickens. Around here, geese have a very short season and from like March to May where they're gonna lay eggs. And so while you can definitely eat a goose egg, here on our farm, we find the goose eggs much more valuable for hatching purposes. Geese are cousins to ducks, but they are a very different species. The two can't interbreed. And unlike ducks, geese are primarily herbivores. The geese here on our farm gain most of their diet from grazing the pasture during the spring, summer, and fall months. And it's really only in these deep winter months that I'm having to significantly augment their feed. Get some scoops of scratch grains. I'll top it off with a scoop of duck feed. So yeah, in terms of the feed for the geese, in the winter months when they're older, I usually feed them a mixture of scratch grains and a little bit of organic duck feed. I'll also supplement their diet with various kitchen scraps, like old salad, apples that have gone bad. I'll even sometimes go crazy and buy them a cabbage at the grocery store. There you go, guys. One of the reasons I'm so passionate about raising geese is because I feel like they are the most sustainable form of poultry. So unlike ducks or chickens or turkeys, where you have to go and buy grain and bring it onto your farm, for most of the year, 90% of an adult goose's diet is coming from the land here on our farm. They're eating weeds and grasses and roaming around the pasture. That makes it more economically sustainable for the farmer because you're having to pay less in feed costs. And it also makes it much more sustainable for the environment because the geese are having a smaller carbon footprint, both in terms of requiring less trucking costs for moving the grain and getting the grain from some other farm here to our farm, as well as the fact that their grazing activity is essentially sequestering carbon, much like mob grazing sheep or cattle. I think if every farm tried to raise 50 to 100 geese a year, it would do wonders for our planet. And it also can do wonders for a farmer's business because for us, geese have been rather profitable. In fact, the most profitable bird we've had on our farm. Another question I often get about geese is, can you keep them with other birds? And the answer is generally speaking, yes. Release the Kraken! <laughs> geese are gonna be bigger than your ducks and chickens. Geese might even bully your ducks and chickens a little bit. But right now we're keeping 20 plus ducks and 20 plus geese and about 15 chickens all together in one relatively smallish space. And there's no issues, no major problems. Of course, sometimes the roosters get a little feisty. General Washington, are you causing problems with the geese? Much like a flock of ducks, geese, or chickens are gonna establish their own internal hierarchy within the flock, they will also have a broader hierarchy amongst all the birds on the farm. And geese usually sit at the top of that pecking order. For the most part, I separate my ducks and geese and chickens in different houses, only because it makes it a little bit easier to manage the different flocks. And if I wanna feed the chickens something different than the geese, I can do it pretty easily. I do have four geese living with my ducks in the duck house. You guys know the Parks and Recreation crew. 
They are four geese that were actually hatched out and raised with a single duck. That single duck, her name is Ron Swanson and she's the duck who thinks she's a goose. What I have found is that flocks of birds, whether they're geese, chickens, or ducks, are very accepting of other birds as long as they're all hatched out together. I once worked with a guy for three years and never learned his name. Best friend I ever had. So if you ever wanted to raise a guard goose, my suggestion would be to raise a gosling with a bunch of chicks or ducks, and they will be so loyal and so connected to that flock that it'll give you the guard activity that you want. You only want one guard goose per flock because if you have multiple geese, they're gonna sort of separate off from the rest of the chickens and, and ducks or whatever that you have. We're gonna try to do an experiment this year of some specially raised guard geese, which are raised with chicks. I'm gonna sell them around here to see if people might wanna buy specially trained guard geese. Time will tell on that one. Probably the biggest risk of interbird violence that you're gonna face with geese is when you introduce new geese into a flock. In particular, late last year, we introduced a male gander by the name of Bruce the Goose to the rest of our established goose flock. And it took a couple of weeks for them to really get along and not fight. At first, I actually kept them locked up in this chicken tractor and all the geese would sort of swarm them and yell at them. Eventually, as they got used to each other from that distance, I let them go free and be with the other geese. And there was some initial violence, but that's now long since passed and now Bruce is a core part of our goose flock. In terms of housing, your geese they don't need too much you know when you think about our winter down coats right what is it those are usually stuffed with goose feathers. So geese have their own system for keeping themselves warm. And I've seen it many times when it's like negative 20 degrees outside and they'll go swimming. The biggest cold risk that they have is, is their feet in terms of those getting too cold and those maybe getting frostbit. All you really need to do to make sure your geese are healthy is provide them with a nice place that's covered and protected from wind so that they can get out of the weather and, and keep dry bedding on the ground. And they're pretty happy and they're fine. This winter, I'm keeping most of the geese in this old shed. It's really just an old hay shed that I added a fourth wall to. And you can see, they're just slats up there as wind breaks and to protect from snow drifts. When you're building your housing for your ducks and geese, you need to recognize that they bring a lot of moisture in there. And so if their housing doesn't have proper ventilation, you can create a lot of health issues for your birds. So you're much better off having less housing versus more housing. The way I've got this place set up is I've got kind of outer areas here with plenty of ventilation, but then I have this inner corner that I've lined with straw and hay bales. That keeps them dry, that keeps them protected, and if they need to huddle up and get out of a storm, they've got the perfect spot to do it. But the other benefit is I can just take these bales and I just spread them right down here on the ground and that basically gives them a nice dry and clean area to bed down on. For the most part, geese won't eat the hay. They only like to eat fresh grass, but these old hay bales work great as bedding. In the summer months, I give my geese even less housing. I will usually house them in the pasture and rotate some sort of movable chicken tractor. I've experimented a little bit with different types of chicken tractors. I've tried to make gigantic chicken tractors that could house like 40 geese and they were so big that they were hard to move. I have also been a big fan of the John Siskovich stress-free chicken tractor. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna buy the plants from John. They're a great design, they're really versatile. I've used them for chickens, ducks, and geese. The only modification that I'm working on right now for next year is potentially not using a tarp. The tarps are nice because they provide good water and shade protection and they also keep the chicken tractor really light. The downside is with the geese though, they are prone to eating everything and they just rip and shred those tarps. I haven't been able to get through a full season without having one of those tarps be completely shredded by a goose. The other thing I'm gonna be experimenting with this year is actually just free ranging the geese all out through this back pasture. Because we now have a fence surrounding the entire pasture and because we have our livestock guardian dog, Toby, being the protector of all the birds here. I'm just gonna let them free range 24 seven once we get past breeding season. One word of caution though for you guys, while geese are much tougher than chickens and ducks and they are a lot less susceptible to smaller predators like weasels and even raccoons, a bobcat or a coyote or even a fox can do some real damage to your geese. And so you need to make sure they are protected from predators. You can't just be too laissez-faire with it all. 
I mean, here on our farm, we're taking security pretty seriously. We have a physical fence, we have electric wires running around that fence, and then we have our guard dog. And knock on wood, I've never had an issue with geese getting attacked by predators. Other concerns that people have when it comes to geese are that they're loud, and yeah, that's pretty much true. I mean, as you've heard throughout the course of this video, they like to honk and yell. You know, they're not doing it constantly, like it's pretty quiet right now, but if even the slightest thing makes them upset, they will go off like burglar alarms. Which is actually really nice, again, back to that issue of protecting from predators, because their noise often puts Toby Dog on high alert, and when Toby Dog's on high alert, I'm feeling so much more confident about my birds being safe. That's one of the main reasons why people like to use geese as guard animals. The other concern people often have with geese, too, is that geese can be aggressive. Meanwhile, you can be quite the cantankerous one, my friend. Hey, Justin, no! Hey, no, no, no. And I gotta say, overall, I have not found that to be the case, except for one very specific exception. When the geese are in mating season, and particularly if they are protecting a nest of eggs, or they have some little baby goslings, they can be super aggressive. It's okay. Ow! <laughs> One of our male pilgrim ganders, Justin Finch Fletchley, he's bitten me more times than I can count. For the most part, a goose bite isn't that bad, but you'll feel it and it'll pinch. I find that wearing gloves and thick pants really help you with that. And also, if you stand your ground, the cobra chickens, they will back off. One super indispensable tool that I've had for working with really all my poultry, but specifically geese, has been to buy one of these oversized fishing nets. If you ever need to catch a goose and handle the goose, you know, sometimes for medical reasons or if you need to separate somebody for breeding purposes. These nets are so useful. Trying to corner a goose and grab a goose and both control its wings so it doesn't flap and beat you and cause bruises or control its neck and head so that it doesn't rear around and bite you. It's really hard to do. But if you can just pop one of these nets on them, they're so much easier to contain and control. I'll leave an affiliate link down below for where you can buy your own fishing net that I recommend. These fishing nets are worth their weight in gold on any poultry farm. And as far as holding a goose goes, I find that the easiest way to do it is to get your arms around the goose's wings and keep those wings in check. And then once you have the wings controlled with your other free hand, have it around their neck, not tightly like you're choking them. but just enough so that they can't move and bite and snap at you. So we're, we're in mid-January here on our farm, so it's still a little bit too soon for breeding season to start. Typically what you're gonna see when the breeding season starts to happen is one goose is gonna use another goose as like a surfboard. I don't know what to tell you guys, it's just natural. If you're starting to see that activity happen and you're starting to get eggs, that means you probably have some fertile eggs. Hatching a goose egg is pretty straightforward and simple. It's about the same as hatching a duck or a chicken. I think the only major difference is that their incubation period is a bit longer. I think it's 30 days for a goose versus 28 for a duck versus what, 21 or 24 for a chicken, something like that. The eggs themselves are much, much bigger. They are thicker shell, they're hard to crack. So when you see that little baby gosling pop out of the shell, it's pretty impressive. Here on our farm, we have a lot of plans for hatching way more geese this year. My goal is actually not to buy any goslings from a hatchery and do all the hatching myself. At this point, I think I have about 13 or 14 females as well as about seven or eight males. Really tough to tell the difference with some breeds. And I just bought a brand new incubator that I'm basically gonna have a cycle of hatchlings each week. Trust me guys, it's gonna get crazy here on the farm this spring. There's a crazy diversity in terms of the types of geese that you can get. Right now on our farm, we're specifically working with three breeds as well as one little experiment we have going on. Primarily on our farm, we're raising Pilgrims, Emdens, and Toulouse. We also have Bruce the Goose, who's a buff goose. My intention is actually to to keep interbreeding all of these birds together to start to create my own line of geese. I intend to try to create a line of farm geese, meaning that they're well suited for farm life. They grow well and create a nice healthy sized bird, good temperament, and suited for our climate here in Northern Vermont. This project's gonna take years and years to do and it might never be successful, but I am a very patient person. You know, because geese are waterfowl, they always require fresh water. In the summer months, that's much easier to do than in the winter months. Here on our farm, we just dump the ice and start again with another fresh bucket of water. The one downside to that method is it creates an absolute ice skating rink. So like this area right behind me here is just a pure sheet of ice because it's just 
water that I've poured and then it freezes overnight and then I do it again the next day and then the next day and then the next day. One invaluable tool for me that's prevented many injuries are these Catula micro spikes. Unlike those cheap crummy wire crampons, these things are the real deal and they can grip on a pure sheet of ice. They are super durable and hold up to the cold temps and so they don't rip or crack. And they've saved me from falling on my butt a number of times. Dude. That wasn't one of those times. <laughs> I'm gonna try something new here. I'm gonna leave a, an affiliate link down below where you guys can buy your own pair of micro spikes if you're interested. For every pair of micro spikes you buy with that link, the good folks at Backcountry actually send me a small percentage. So if you guys wanna help out our farm, feel free to buy some micro spikes, but don't buy them if you live in like South Texas or Florida, cause you're not gonna need them. I just mean like if you're in the market for micro spikes, not like you should just go out and buy stuff. I feel like I'm leaving out so much information in this video, but since I've made a lot of videos about raising geese, what I did was created this playlist and you guys can go back and watch me in action from when I've hatched geese to when I've gotten baby geese here on the farm to raising them up as teenagers. You can see how I brooded them. You can, so just check out this playlist right here and you'll learn even more about geese. And once you personally start working with geese, I'm pretty certain that you're gonna find that they are your favorite form of livestock too.